It's the Daily Morning Show where we talk about the latest topics in entertainment. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Britt Morin. I'm Allie Colbert. And I'm Lucas Tim. Hi, Hi everyone. Guys. Today we're going to talk about the news that has Lady Gaga's little monsters in a frenzy, a health study <laughs> that's calling out hip hop music videos, and the emoji controversy that had New Yorkers screaming, forget about it. Plus, <laughs> Betches Media founders Aline Cooperman, Samantha Fishbean, and Jordana Abraham join the table. <laughs> Can I tell you guys a secret? <laughs> what is it? Whenever I'm feeling sad and needing some comfort, nothing makes me feel better than a nice hot bowl of pasta. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Whether it's bolognese, pesto, or a spicy plate of cacio e pepe, I can never get enough. <laughs> Happy National Pasta Day, everyone. Ow! Mi piace mangiare a pasta. Woo! <laughs> I mean... Bloody oh, Lucas is our favorite. Only for food. Oh, <laughs> I love how much you love but, food. Yeah. Oh, fat Lucas. That's what I mean. Fat I, Luke. I, he's inside. I just love food so much. This is such a great day, National Pasta Day. Literally, my main food group is pasta. Um, <laughs> and I'm so excited we get to talk about favorite pasta restaurants in New York, our favorite pasta dishes. Personally, I love a great bolognese. Mm -hmm. But now, a cacio e pepe has really been coming back for me. It's and taken I've, over. It's taken over, and I, like, I went to this great restaurant in Chicago called Monteverde. They had the best cacho I've ever had in my life. Wow. And yeah, and I mean, you've had a lot. and I've had a lot, <laughs> and I've had a lot. See, I'm from Texas, and I don't think anyone can even pronounce cacio e pepe. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just called pasta or spaghetti. I'm with you. I didn't know these names until I moved out east. Yeah, honestly. this is really? very fancy. Yeah, it cacio e pepe. menu song? I would no, just be like Alfredo or yeah. red sauce. Yeah, oh. red or white. Yeah. yeah. Like. Well, this is this is me. This is me in Florence on one of my first dates <laughs> with my girlfriend Chloe eating nice bolognese. Yes. Um, and we also have another picture. Wait, another picture because it's another great one of me of me and my favorite waiter, my favorite restaurant in Florence, oh. at Il Profeta. This is a Parmesan dish. You know what they're known for is this pasta called La Bonta de Profeta, which is Ooh. a John Volta pasta. It's not this one, but that one's so good. It's a secret sauce. People lick the plate. It's like panela vodka. Yeah, basically. It's really good. How much uh, are you working out after? You oh, I was really you? fat in Florence. I just gained <laughs> a lot of weight. It's all good. I well, walked Lucas a lot. Lucas is in the gym every single day. Yeah, yeah. he does eat like. I go to, because I eat like so much. I need to go to the gym every single day. <laughs> I feel like Amer so many Americans are doing these like carb-free diets, low-carb right. diets. No. Do you think like pasta is declining as a food trend? I don't. I mean, you definitely, oh, see, you Brit. definitely <laughs> see like Sorry. healthier pastas like um, spinach and like the like the whole wheat, different Ooh, yeah, types of like. The chickpea one is so good. That company one. Bonza. I think yes. you just had it last I've night. I've made Bonza funny. pasta before. I like to eat it because I can tell myself that it's a protein. Mm. Right. Yeah. Because you get the protein from chickpeas. Yeah. And that yeah. pasta tastes like cheesy on its own. Like you don't have to add anything for it to taste just like absolutely delicious. It has like a, a more like textured bite to it. Like it tastes kind of whole grainy. Quinoa pasta is another one too. Yeah. Quinoa pasta. Yeah. yeah. Do you fuck with that? No. I like, I like hard carbs. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm half Italian. I need the full-on carb Italian pasta. Yeah. My favorite, one of my favorite restaurants, this is a restaurant you need to get your grandparents to bring you to. It's called Lusardi's in the Upper East Side. Mm -hmm. It is like very high-end pasta. But if you ever want like kind of a more of a bar East Village kind of thing, Arturo's in the East Village. It's really known for its pizza, but also their bolognese is incredible. Yeah. Um, what show are we on right now? I don't know, yeah. Don't know. It's all Bill Brunch. It's talking <laughs> about food. Wait, but I have to tell you, so, yeah. so I was like nine months pregnant a couple years ago during October. So guess who dressed up as a can of Prego for <laughs> Halloween? <laughs> Halloween ideas, the guys. Quality sauce. I was like this big, a can of prig. Yeah. That's such a good costume That's funny. idea. That's clever. Yeah. It was clever. Thank oh, you. I'm really impressed by Thank that. Thank you. We have a video also of my favorite pasta mm. and me interacting with it through one of the greatest filters of all time. Mm. Do you remember when Snapchat had the Kraft Mac and <laughs> oh Cheese my gosh. filter? I love this filter so much. What are you doing in that video? I'm uh, fucking myself to macaroni and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is pretty self explanatory I want to know what you're saying. I'm yeah. with you though on the macaroni. That's my favorite pasta. My right. mom, it's like a soul mm -hmm. food dish. It's baked mac and cheese. We have mm -hmm. it every Thanksgiving and it's just like the che cheese laid so on cheese. Good. But it's like a very traditional pasta. Yeah, mm -hmm. I haven't had good like baked mac and cheese because like my mom is a Jewish New Yorker. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't feel like I've had that. Ooh, I'll have Rita hook it up for you. My mom's is. Yeah. Really? Okay, Bit. good. Yeah. Good. Right. Was that Italian? Was yeah, it's good. Yeah, that's something. <laughs> oh, lasagna. Got you, I love the lasagna. <laughs> or, or, uh, um, ZD. Do, you guys ZD. Use, do you guys use an instant pot? Have you ever used oh, an I've instant pot? You know, we, have, we talk about that all the time, cook. but I've never had that. Yeah, um, but but this that. might make you cook. It's one pot. You just put anything in there, put the cover on, 
set a timer for 10 minutes, and it's all mm -hmm. done. So like, I'll put frozen ground beef, the pasta noodles, oh. the sauce, set a timer, and in 10 minutes, it's Stop it. spaghetti yeah. bolognese. <laughs> oh my god. That's well, your pepe. Those were like blowing up on Amazon like two years ago. Yeah, they're Everybody 99 bucks. They're still blowing up. The no Pioneer way. Woman just made like a flower kind. Oh my god, the Pioneer Walmart. Woman. Yeah. I do like her. Pioneer Woman. No Every episode, I feel like she's like blinking for someone to send her like a hel like a savior. Like I feel like <laughs> she's being held hostage somewhere in the Midwest. <laughs> With like yeah, eight kids. Know. Yeah, <laughs> on her part. She's like, uh, I'm the Pioneer Woman. I really love this job. Send uh, help. <laughs> <laughs> You know who else uh, makes really good pasta? Lady Gaga's parents have a restaurant on the Upper West Side called Joanne. And I used to work at ABC and around the corner, we would go there all the time and the pasta oh my is God. phenomenal. Named after her album. Yeah. I love it, yeah. Love it. Uh, but speaking of Lady Gaga, guys, a star is born, but a star is also engaged. <laughs> on Tuesday, Lady Gaga confirmed her engagement to talent agent Christian Carino. At Elle's 25th annual Women in Hollywood celebration, Gaga thanked her new fiance during her speech and the internet went nuts. Lady Gaga recently starred in the box office hit and remake of A Star Is Born alongside Bradley Cooper. I still haven't seen it. You haven't seen I it? I haven't like, seen no. it either. Let's go. I have no, to. Okay, okay, done. Yeah. We um, like tried to go and then I just... You haven't seen it either? I know. Everybody went and then I felt... I'm the one that saw it. Oh, yeah. I'm the one that gives the review. Oh my God, there's so much pressure. <laughs> it's really good. No, really? <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm the one who has to monologue. Like, no one asked you. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, I have to say <laughs> It's very good. It's really good. And I think I think what makes her so exceptional is her voice. She's such yeah. an incredible singer. I think she's a very good actress. Never once did I think, oh, this is Lady Gaga trying to act. Like I really believed her. Do I think she's the best actress of all time? No. But right. I think Bradley Cooper is really great in it. It's a great job directing it. It's a mm -hmm. really emotional and and good movie. Yeah. I heard a story that he went to her house before this movie and he was like, I'm only going to do this with you if we can play your piano and just test our voices together. And if it doesn't work, it's right. not going to work. That's what Bradley Cooper said. Yeah. yeah. And so he went to her house and it was like, she played the piano and they started singing. And he was, in the first 10 seconds, he's like, okay, we're good. Right. Yeah. And then they left and it was like, it's shake on the hand thing. Yeah. But apparently that connection was like immediate, which yeah. I've heard like in the movie, you can speak to it maybe. The chemistry is it's believable. It's fantastic. It's, they, yeah. You absolutely believe them. I mean, they are. Are a, a great couple in it, and I, I, it, this, it, it totally worked. It was a, it's a big deal for Lady Gaga. I think it actually it definitely. She insisted on giving him a hand job before every scene. <laughs> <laughs> I like the darker hair too. Yeah, yeah, she looks great. And they filmed, they filmed a lot of the scenes at Coachella, so they're, they're on real stages yeah. with a lot of real, like real people mm. watching. So Beyonce uh, like photobombed them. And then I, I, I was the no, that, that was from two years ago when Lady Gaga um, did Coachella. They negotiated that she would headline uh, the Coachella. They used right. The obviously, the they movie. didn't film like. Four months, yeah. <laughs> Wasn't there a cameo that Halsey did? Yeah, I think so. Yes. How was it? Oh, I mean, it's good. It's not really something I, I remember. He doesn't that remember. Much. Yeah, I, I love her. Okay, that. can we talk about her ring though? Yeah, I was gonna say six carat pink sapphire. I think they were saying it's like a four hundred thousand yeah. dollar ring. Um, I mean, he's a Hollywood agent, right? He's working at CAA, got that CAA money. Is that what it's up. Yeah. She, Did CAA? she like put in a little bit for that? I don't know. He oh. reps. He reps some of the he biggest acts. He's got Bieber, Christina Aguilera, J Lo, and Miley. Yeah. So he's getting paid. When when you're an agent huh. and you get those clients, he and and he reps Gaga. You're getting ten percent yeah. of whatever. So does all those he not people. rep her anymore? Like when she get married, is that like against I, the rules? I wonder. Hmm. Well, I know I she, know. he was instrumental in um, her Super Bowl halftime performance and really being supportive there. So I wonder what's mm -hmm. gonna happen if she gets married. Maybe they should be like, hey, we should separate a little bit. Yeah. Maybe she likes that. Maybe it's interesting. We were talking about um, very famous. Um, women yeah. dating kind of men who are more behind the scenes in yeah. the industry and like how that relationship works if it doesn't work well like J-Lo did it too right yeah. Wasn't mm -hmm. it? but she keeps dating her dancers that's kind of <laughs> different that's kind of sexy the though the power structure there is interesting I don't know right. I just think about like they probably dance really well together oh I'm sure that's why they're <laughs> dancing together like one of Peltro and Brad Falchuk yeah um, Reese Witherspoon's uh, husband Toth is, is his last name he's an agent right. right so there's definitely good foreplay going on yes <laughs> I kind of like this dynamic for her though but, you know she had that really high pro profile engagement to another actor and they were constantly in the media yeah, and this kid. one mm -hmm. she's they've been together for over a year they've kept it really private yeah. and I think that's probably her realizing that if she wants it to be successful maybe she should keep it yeah. more personal and he's, he's older than her yeah. I feel like that works for her she just seems yeah. like a very like mature and person always thinking big and like artistically so can you yeah. imagine what her wedding dress is gonna look like oh. do you think she's gonna keep it simple or no, is it gonna meat. be like the mm. meat wedding dress yeah. it's hard to know with Gaga I know what do you think I don't know. You know, she might not wear anything. <laughs> That's I don't fair. know. That's clothes bullshit. not required. That would be a very gaga. I feel like when she wears those like really extravagant things, that's more like for her like persona mm -hmm. as an artist, mm -hmm. less like her personal. 
Well, she's Stephanie Germanata. Yeah. But I will say, at her sure. Star is Born era has been a more subtle, more glamorous, high fashion era instead of the when Lady Gaga yeah. of Well, she's Born toned that way. down. Yeah, she's the, this reinvention of her since, um, basically since the Super Bowl comeback has been right. more of a glamorous and Lady Gaga. And the documentary, Gaga. too. Yes. There's yeah. a documentary on Netflix. Did you guys all yeah. see yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Two. That, yeah, she's yeah. just, she's so real. Yeah. Yeah, five foot two. Yeah. yeah. She's five foot two. That's my height. Isn't it amazing <laughs> that yeah. someone my height can look like such a woman? Like, that's not, no, but seriously, that's what I thought the whole time in the movie. I was like, wow, you're like powerful and you're short. Like, it's me, it's Kim K, it's her. Like, we can do things. You can. Yes. Yeah. Short girl. Short got that. Short way. Yes, you know. <laughs> Well, guys, moving on, music videos are going up in smoke. A study published in the JAMA International Medicine Journal suggests that R&B and hip-hop music videos are sending a bad health me message by featuring smoking and vaping. The study also argues that smoking imagery encourages young people to start using or increases interest in using tobacco and marijuana. I don't know, I think kids just want to smoke weed. I think it's cannabis, right? Like, yeah. no one wants to smoke cigarettes anymore. Uh, yeah. I have Cheers seen from the back. so many people smoking on the street and so many young people smoking cigarettes, and I think, I'm like constantly shocked. Me I thought too. we like squashed that, but mm. now everyone I see who's young is always smoking on the street. Every single NYU student has a cigarette yeah. addiction. Really? And I'm like, what is this? Like, it's not required to get your Tisch degree. Right. <laughs> not even the jewels, they're actual cigarettes? No, yeah, actual, actual cigarettes. cigarettes. Yeah. Now I think it's US, the USB jewel, but like, yeah. I don't, the jewels are so humiliating. I think that's embarrassing. Everyone <laughs> has them. But yeah, when I first came to NYU, now that was like six, seven years ago, whatever, but but um, everyone started smoking. Like, why you, cigarettes are so disgusting? I never got it, but now it's the jewels thing. I have I've had neither because I don't like it. But um, yeah, I don't know about this study. I find it. Anything has influence over anyone. Just like, just how about you talk to your kids and say smoking's bad, and if they watch a rap, you know well, what I mean? Well, it's not like, that they. It's not that they don't know that smoking is right. bad. It's that it makes you fucking cool. It looks cool. <laughs> but think about every character in a movie that we love. They're always smoking or do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or drinking. But like, it's sort of like is in our Hollywood. Like every glamorous yeah. actor and celebrity smokes in their films. See, so I mean, I live on the the West Coast mm -hmm. where cannabis is legalized, yeah. and the edibles are becoming the big trend. It's like everyone's got gummies and honey and yeah. like whatever it is. And like I sort of feel like the next generation will ditch smoking in terms of just I hope eating so. or drinking. Like I think cannabis tea and cannabis is but, the new wine. Yeah. You know, for instance. So. Who knows? We'll yeah. see how it goes. We yeah. also see like just CBD gummies in New York and things right. like that without the THC that people are using for like aches and pains, mm -hmm. and that's clearly like becoming popular. Yeah. So, but I think it really boils down to businesses. I mean, there's this stat in that article that says that brand placement has grown from 25% to 87% from 2013 to 2017. So that's businesses, and it's really up to the FDA to put some regulations on this, because if you offer a musician or an artist some money, for their, like, they're gonna take it. But is this it. the smoking industry then, trying to yes, maintain relevance? absolutely. Because people are doing gummies now? <laughs> absolutely, I mean, that's why the FDA are the ones that got rid of Joe Camel. I'm like, they yeah. can realize when somebody's marketing to youth, and right. I think it's up to them to step in, mm -hmm. not so much the artists to not because if artists are smoking, they're going sure. to be smoking. And like yeah. in the ra uh, last like five years or so, you even see like cigarette packs have that most like grotesque graphic yeah. image on them of like your lungs and it's you like- You will die. It? Right, you yes. will die. It says that, right? You should say that on the music video. Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> you will die if you do. There's a lot DJ of things Khaled looks very videos. cool, but he will die too. <laughs> he doesn't look cool. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think anyone thinks he looks cool. <laughs> like this might make me sound like crazy, but I think the bigger issue is all like the prescription meds in the, in the rap videos. Yeah. Like they're always talking about like popping Zan and like doing pills oh, and yeah, stuff and I'm like I don't know which is worse cigarettes or like the pharmaceutical drugs that kids are like think are cool or like Molly yeah um, like, or the actual drugs Right, <laughs> like, like I for me, that would be the bigger concern given like where right. we're at as a country. I don't, it's just been the argument forever. Like back in the '90s, the people when Madonna's video was getting banned for nudity and sex, she was like, "Okay, well, I think violence is worse." But I agree with her. Yeah. Why are you banning my videos? Because you see a boob while like you're showing someone getting their head blown off on TV. Totally, I find that I agree with that argument. Like this is not as bad as like the violent imagery that's out there and the totally. violent video games. Like the video games that people play, like literally it's like, all you do is just run through a block and you shoot people. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's it? Like it's just, I just find it, I don't know, so you can make this argument with so many different things and I just don't know if this is the one that was gonna be catastrophic to our society. Yeah. Like the, speaking of like the violence, the other day when I was leaving the office, I saw a little girl with her mom and the little girl was holding an umbrella and her mom was like ordering a coffee and the little girl turned to me, held the umbrella up and started going, <laughs> 
<laughs> and like, I was really scared. <laughs> what if you played into it? <laughs> I, I was like, ow, ow, yeah, ow. Yeah. No, but like, that I was really girl. weird. Yeah, yeah well, that's, that's little girl should be on a watch list for now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna like call 911 on that little girl. <laughs> <laughs> be like, hey, here's a pig, future school shooter, catch her now. <laughs> I'm afraid, I have two little boys and I'm afraid to even buy them like water guns. I know. Right. I'm like, oh. I don't want them to be using guns. Um, but I feel like, Little boys love that. I don't know. It's yeah. like a hard line. You I have seven stuff. nephews, and I totally get it. They yeah. just want to shoot stuff. Even bubble guns. Yeah. Like, there's like, yeah, yeah. it's fun. But, but it's like, how do you not encourage that too much? But also, just like, I used to play with water guns. Right. You know right. what I mean? Like, there's got to be some discon, like, yeah. Yeah. some connects. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. Well, the emoji war has been won. Earlier this month, Apple unveiled a dry, sad looking bagel emoji that many New Yorkers just couldn't stomach, complaining that it was stale and more fit to be from the frozen aisle from a supermarket. Well, it's time to rejoice because Apple has officially made amends with a spanking new bagel emoji that has cream <laughs> cheese and a doughier consistency. Bagel lovers, <laughs> The texting game has officially gone into high schmear. <laughs> are you excited? Did were you like crying over that basic ass bagel? How are you guys feeling about this bagel? I think millennials are broken. <laughs> like what? I didn't even. Who cares? The passion that that we feel. Yeah, the over things this that we emoji. focus on. Well, people really did not feel represented by that grocery store looking I ugly hate that bagel. Type of bagel. Yeah, it's yeah. disgusting. I'm really glad it has cream cheese on it now. Uh, I mean, like I think that the above bagel is absolutely disgusting. Yeah. And in fact, I won't even eat a bagel without cream cheese. To me, that's criminal. What about like a bagel sandwich or bagel oh. peanut butter oh. jelly? Mm -hmm. like, butter. No. Butter, honey butter bagel. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I can have a bagel sandwich for like lunch, right. but like when it comes to breakfast, it, it needs to be bacon, egg, and cheese or with cream cheese. There's no really in between for me. So <laughs> I'm pretty happy with this. Well, where do we draw the line here? Because you know how I feel about cinnamon raisin bagels. Well, we need so a Miranda. I want full representation of all the possible bagels. Well, there's only one donut. Donut on the emoji too. Well, and we it's need like more donuts. Chocolate with well, sprinkles, but I'm like, where's the glaze? Thank you. They don't even have iced coffee oh. as an emoji, so they assume that everyone drinks hot coffee, and I don't drink hot coffee ever, like not even during the winter. Yeah. Okay, they don't have Asian men, so like, <laughs> you know, but it, you know, the way you select a person and like change their it's skin true, color, no you should be able to like select the bagel and do like everything. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, raisin, everything, Asiago. I mean, yeah. there's so many. Same with toast. There's no avocado toast, yeah. is there? Oh, really? Right? I but think there is like, avocado. But there's a bread and there's an avocado, but like you, you should be able be to creative. hybrid combo the emoji. Oh my god. Right? That's Look our new app. I didn't know that. We're <laughs> combo really emoji. Combo emoji. You heard it here first, everybody. <laughs> no one go trademark that URL. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, the uproar even caused Philadelphia Cream Cheese to start a petition to add cream cheese to the emoji, which received over 1,000 signatures. The folks there were certainly thrilled and took to Twitter saying, Hooray! Bagel lovers everywhere united and convinced Apple to turn the plane. Hashtag sad bagel into a delicious hashtag happy bagel. And we are celebrating. Hashtag it must be the Philly. <laughs> if, if, Only a thousand signatures did I, that? I know, but still, like, I feel like, I don't know, if we put like vote, emoji voting on the on the polls in the midterms, like the millennial turnout would like, skyrocket. Oh, like, yeah. I had to like vote for the donut flavor on the emoji. Like, every, they were just going, who's this rep? Okay, I'll vote for that person. Right. Or like get a free bagel and cream cheese at the voting booth. Yes. Philly cream cheese needs yeah, to get to that. the booth. Ooh, this that morning, is such right? a good idea. But, yeah. People would do that. I or I so. like if you could just text a picture of the emoji of the person you want to vote for. I would vote. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. like, oh, that just, seems like very nice. Not scientific and like it could get hacked. Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> probably. But, like, everything yeah. else gets hacked. Russia so. would hack it. Yeah, it's all gonna hack. As Hillary Clinton once said, Pokemon go to the polls. Oh, did she say <laughs> that? Yes. Oh. that? Worst. Oh, yeah. Bless her. Uh, Sorry, Hill. Did they actually Bless do that though? They put Pokemon by the polls so people would Maybe. be more inspired. They, I think yeah. they actually did that. Hey, yeah, whatever works. You should be able to vote online. <laughs> Millennials would vote if you could vote online. I know. Or by text. Just or by numbers yeah. too. But again, like I could only imagine the things that would erupt around. <laughs> Look how many people vote for American Idol or The Voice. Yeah. I know. They could do it through their phone. <laughs> oh, that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> 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 I really thought our political system was The Voice. Right. Like turn oh, your chair if you like. Smarter way to do it. I think we've got to upgrade how we vote to get people 
to the polls. I think so. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> well, now it's time for our special guests, Aline Cooperman, Samantha Fishbean, and Jordana Abraham are the co-founders of Betches Media, a multi-platform company dedicated to millennial women. Betches has taken over the digital world with a strong social media presence that encourages women to experience comedy and empowerment in an honest environment. Today, the Betches are here to discuss their latest book, When's Happy Hour, a guide on how to thrive in a professional environment and advance their career. Everyone, please give a warm Bill Brunch welcome to Aline, Samantha, and Jordana. You guys, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us. How are you today? Great. Good. Good. Um, so we're really excited to talk about your book. Um, will you share with us a little inspiration behind, behind When's Happy Hour? Um, yeah, so, I mean, we've been giving advice since we started 2011. College girls have been emailing us about dating advice and all of that. Um, over the last couple years, maybe more recently, like one year, um, we were getting an influx of emails about career advice and what, how to ask for a raise and all, everything in between. So we were like, maybe this is a good time because we also feel like we can give some career advice where we are in our lives. Um, we've been building our company for seven years mm -hmm. and um, we've recently hired like 14 employees we have full time and a bunch of freelance staff. So we think that we, had some experience with writing, <laughs> um, and yeah, it, it, words f just flew out. <laughs> yeah, and, and so many celebrities have praised the book. You have like references from like Kelly Ripa, Michelle Wolf, Whitney Cummings. Yeah. Like, doesn't that feel so great? Like to think about where you guys have come from and your journey. Yes, they definitely were not endorsing our first book. <laughs> but yeah, it's really amazing yes. looking back on how far we've come. What are some of the tips that you give in this book for advancing millennial women's careers? We give you tips basically on everything from perfecting your resume to figuring out what you want to do in general with your life or how to leave a job that you just don't feel passionate about. We really run like through the whole career process. What's the resume tip? Can we what? share one now? Do you have a good resume tip? Let yeah. me take, take off your childhood email. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> like no pets lover 89, like that's yeah. gotta go. <laughs> don't write about your high school babysitting job. Okay, yeah. okay, those are good. Um, yeah. I saw that there uh, is maybe a quote from Helen from Bridesmaids, or like yes. you how, because she's literally one of my favorite characters in movies. <laughs> so so yeah. what's the advice that you give through her? Um, so that quote was <laughs> referencing um, how people, you may start a job or you may start a career path that you think is for you, but you're actually, you grow and change throughout all of your experiences. So we took the quote of her where she's like, oh, like you're growing, that means you're changing. Like, no, I think it does mean the same thing. <laughs> I love her. She's so condescending and awesome. Yeah, she's the best. Can you tell us how Bedges started? Um, so we started when we were all in college together. We actually grew up together and went to the same middle school, high school, and everything. Wow, middle and school and high school. You yeah. guys really yeah. have stuck no, together. Yeah. Wait, where are you guys from? Long Island. OK. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we were all in college together and we were living together our senior year and we were kind of just bored one night and <laughs> we ended up making a blog that was called Betches Love This Site <laughs> and it, like, we showed it to one friend who posted it on her, friend, or her sister's Facebook wall and then it just went viral kind of and we kept doing it and we got a book deal after we graduated and then seven years later. Here we are. That yeah. is so crazy. Like I remember when it was just the blog, mm -hmm. and I would read it in high school. And I remember the Betch list. Yeah. Yes. And like wow. all of those things. And I remember like emailing and writing supplements, that, and you guys didn't answer as fast. <laughs> <laughs> and like the tone of the of the blog at that mm -hmm. point, though, is I feel different from how it is now. Like I think it was a little yeah. meaner. Like it was like a little <laughs> more. Like it's still snarky, and like definitely yeah. has like an empowerment feel now. Mm -hmm. But like I just felt like how did that tonally like evolve? Was that intentional? So in the beginning, we were really going for more like dark satire. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it was, and I think at the time, like the, the culture was a little bit less PC. So you could kind of say things that, you know, 
maybe you couldn't say now. Yeah. Um, but also we as people have evolved and grown up and growing the, and changing. Grow, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So the type of content that we focus on and the way we say things is a little bit more mature. Right. Much right. Better. But, also, yeah. oh, but also as we grew, like the audience got bigger, mm -hmm. it's a lot harder to keep a very satirical voice because most people don't get it and mm -hmm. don't realize that we're really, we're kidding, first of all, <laughs> and that it's that we're talking about ourselves, like ourselves included in the joke. So now that we're bigger, um, and as Sammy said, we've grown, we, we don't really relate to what we've written in the past. Right. Mm -hmm. But it was also a way you guys, which I liked about it, because I knew it betches in college, was um, to combat that frat tire, those, those yeah. false uh, barstool sports kind of misogynistic websites that were growing. You guys grew betches at like the alternative, which was like, let's the female perspective, let's mm -hmm. be funny, let's be sarcastic, which I appreciate. Was, that's always an, a goal, right, of yours? Right, yeah, for sure. I think Tucker Max was really big yeah. um, at the time when we were in college, and there was like, there was this glorified kind of frat bro. Um, and no one was talking about a female equivalent or kind of like that a, gr that a girl could be engaged in activities that weren't necessarily like appropriate. <coughs> and it, this really gave us an outlet to kind of comment on them and make fun of them, but also like we were involved in them, so make yeah. fun of ourselves as well. So um, I have a seven-year-old company, multi-platform, female media brand as well, <laughs> so we should chat. But also, um, you know, one question I get asked a lot is, do you guys plan to grow with the brand as your audience ages, or do you always want it to be this brand that's like for young women, mm -hmm. up and coming professionals, and cater to a younger generation? Well, it's funny because, like, our con like we said, like our content has evolved; it's become more mature, and we're writing about things now that we would never have written about, like when we were in college. So we're writing about things like weddings and uh, bridal bridal problems and like but not babies work yet? and having a career. Not, not, <laughs> not babies not yet. Not babies yet. Yeah. Have okay. children yet. <laughs> but, to say. It right. happened in my company though, so watch out. Yeah. <laughs> but we're fortunate that our audience has grown with us, so we kind of feel like anything that we're kind of where we're kind of telling it as it is and being raw and honest, like it doesn't matter. In college it was pre games and right. going out and things like that. And now it's more like uh, how to plan your uh, engagement party or something like that. Yeah. So do you think yeah. that's where it will continue to grow, or will you stick with this 20-something crowd? I think we're really fortunate and we're blessed yeah. <laughs> that our audience has grown up, grown up with us and is still just as loyal as they were in the beginning, like you guys are talking about uh, here, reading our blog. Um, head pro. But, yeah, the head pro, yeah. But, <laughs> TBT. Um, but we also ha still have a growing audience of college students, and um, we have people, like, we, ha we um, do a podcast called Diet Starts Tomorrow. We had um, a woman write in. She's like, I'm 60, and I'm experiencing all of these issues that you really? guys are talking about. So I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. But, um, <laughs> that's a frightening email. But so the, yeah, <laughs> the, the audience, I think, while it's expanded, it's growing. And as we are getting bigger, our voice sort of um, expands the reach right. of more than just the young millennial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause you guys, this is your third book. You have a very successful Instagram, yeah. you've got your podcast. Is there one place that you're really focused on growing more or expanding more? Um, we, so so yeah. in the next year, we're working on growing our podcast. Mm -hmm. Over the past year, I think we've launched eight podcasts yeah. and we have a few more in production. And the topics range anywhere from dating to wellness, like which we host, um, to politics. Mm -hmm. um, we just launched a true crime one, which is coming out with us like a second half of their season. So we're really focused on expanding. Um, we also are bringing in more outside talent. So one example of that would be we launched Comments by Celebs podcast. Um, and we're working on working with more comedians and that sort of thing, just to really make it a place where we can have a lot of really talented female voices and just bring more people under our umbrella. That's so impressive. You're really building your own media like conglomerate, which is so, sure. I That's love seeing goal. like three <laughs> yeah. women, young women yeah. doing that. Well, so thank, thank you. you. And when you guys started, like Instagram wasn't really a thing, but you guys kind of yeah. grew with Instagram and yeah. were able to get ad revenue from it. So now looking at social media, it seems like, yes, it's still big, but you guys are now looking at podcasts and creating yeah. content. Is that where this company is going? Yeah, we're yeah. definitely like always trying to keep up with you know what people are engaged in. We want to be where people are consuming information and where they're getting entertained. So podcasts seem like a very natural next extension for us. And we're, we're really loving the platform and being able to like really engage in funny and meaningful conversations yeah. on and there. We, and we also understand the risk of really just relying on one platform. Instagram can change any minute. We saw Facebook change like in, overnight. And that affected a lot of publishers. So we really don't want to rely 
solely on one platform. So that's why we're expanding into podcasts. We're um, investing a lot in our website and um, hopefully in TV. And the shop, day. too. The yeah. shop, absolutely. I'm a mouse yes. duh. It's yes. definitely the <laughs> shirt dress. That's our best seller. Yeah. 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 It's your best seller. I knew it. I like the t-shirt with I'm a all of the Kardashian children's names. Yes, <laughs> very yes. important shirt. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> I've, and I've seen recently um, like funny videos on your account that like you guys have created like wow, with like Hannah Burner yeah. and things like yeah. that. And like you. And me. <laughs> I, I've been in them, but oh. I'm not trying to plug myself. And. I'm curious, like, do you see, like, a web series or something like that? Because I feel like your tone fits perfectly for, like, watching short-form videos like that. Yeah, so we actually have a web series that we po we basically created and posted a teaser of. It's called Meme Girls, which you can actually watch on our IGTV or on our YouTube. Um, but we, series like that, um, we're looking to make them into more extended, long-form content. It's really just a question of finding the right platform where all the eyes will go. Um, and if that's, you know, IGTV or YouTube or right. working with like a bigger company. So yeah, I mean, that is like a big time and money investment, but we think that we could really do yeah. good content in that form. When yeah. you guys come to work every day, are you like strolling in like, sup betches? Like do you call <laughs> each other betches? Is that like the <laughs> phrase no. in the I would, I said, You're like, I'm, I'm over that word? But I don't go betches yeah. to them. But our right. employees call us the betches, which I've learned from like overhearing. <laughs> <laughs> we were our friends though. Yeah. 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 Our friends. Yeah. yeah. They, Meaning yeah, like, like the, the three bet bosses? Right. Meaning yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. your code word. Yeah. It's a term of indeed. Right. And we grew up together, so we have a lot of the same friends too. And then when they were referring to the three of us, they call us the betches. Yeah. Yeah. That weird. makes sense. Yeah. I would like go to that yeah. too. Yeah. You know? That's I feel like nice. it could be a good band name. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. Well, yeah. I don't know if we're really Yeah, music bring it back. Songs, right? <laughs> but what I also think you guys are doing, you guys spoke to it, is like you're really trying to inform form this generation of women. I was looking at your site, you have a newsletter that's mostly political focus and it's very funny in your in your tone. And what was the decision to go beyond, to do that? Cause that's like, people don't think newsletter, email newsletter is that kind of a modern thing, but I think it's important. Yeah, so when we started, Betch was highly apolitical. One of our early posts, which you, one of you might remember, is not keeping up with the news. <laughs> um, and we really wanted it to kind of be a place that was like free of those sort of serious topics and those opinions. but. As the climate has changed in terms of how young women are more engaged in politics, we felt like we could easily speak to this and we could just put our voice to it and that people would really like it. So the SUP newsletter has been really growing yeah. and we have a podcast well, about it as well. Well, it's betchy to know what's up now. Yeah. 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 Sure. Like, yeah. I remember when Obama's campaign was change and you guys posted something about, about like change and you're like, not that change, the stupid fucking coins in my wallet. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Thanks for yeah. us. Yeah. You're welcome. So glad you could come. Yeah. Uh, Aline, Samantha, and Jordana, yeah. thanks so much for joining Thank us. You. Thank you. <laughs> Everyone, make sure to pick up a copy of When's Happy Hour on sale October 23rd. We'll see you all tomorrow, same time, same table. Yes. Thank you, guys.